24-year-old Hezbollah is waiting for his father to come home. Due to his fragile mental health, he doesn't understand that his dad, Rahmatullah Nekzad, has been murdered. Nekzad was the head of Ghazni's journalists' union, and his salary supported his five sons, two daughters, and elderly parents. Now, one of his other sons, who's not even reached his teens, will have to step into that role. My child is only 12 years old. Now he is the breadwinner for our family. His father was trying his best to educate them. He loved his children. I call on the government and all other organizations to help our children. These kids need their books, notebooks, and we must pay utility bills. The youngest need milk, and the eldest need medicine. Nixad is one of six journalists killed in the last two months. His father says the government needs to provide protection for the sake of future generations. I'm old and weak now. I can't even see properly. As I can't work, I'm asking the government and others to help these children. Nick Zod was not a government employee and he was not a warlord who killed others. He was a journalist. Rights activists, journalists and politicians are increasingly being targeted. The government says it's made arrests after the killings, but unions are demanding justice. ISIL has claimed responsibility for uh, two murders, two cases of murders. Um, however, the investigations uh, about the killing of these six journalists have not been completed yet. The campaign of assassination of journalists has uh, resulted in creation of pervasive fear uh, among journalists and media workers in Afghanistan. Uh, some journalists have left the country and the rest operate under extensive uh, shadow of fear. Uh, this is very, very concerning for us because if the current trend of uh, assassination of journalists does not stop soon, we will lose one of the greatest achievements of Afghanistan in the past two decades, which is press freedom and freedom of expression. Afghan government officials have accused the Taliban of being behind some of the attacks, but the group has not claimed responsibility for any assassinations. After breakthrough negotiations between the two sides in 2020, skepticism about a peaceful solution is now growing. A second round of talks has resumed in Doha, but with the new U.S. administration about to take charge, all sides are biding their time. According to a U.S. Taliban deal, all U.S. soldiers must leave Afghanistan by April. I believe uh, with Trump we would have more of a time-based approach uh, in terms of withdrawal. But uh, with the Biden administration now, we will have more of a condition-based approach uh, where they will uh, really look into the commitments made in the Doha agreement. Although the overall outlook of the administration would remain same, the peace process would continue, but there will be more of a condition-based uh, approach. Afghans continue to live daily amid insecurity and lawlessness. Nekzad's children, like many others in Afghanistan, Though the ultimate price paid by some just for doing their job. Osama bin Javed, Al Jazeera.